All right. Mid conversation, we're just going to jump right in. <laughs> so welcome everybody in Facebook land and, and YouTube. Um, today we have Andrea Beluso and you're in Rome right now, but... No, I'm not. I'm in Stockholm, actually. Oh, you are. I keep hopping all over the world. So it's you do? Confusing. Yeah, yeah. All right. So tell me about your last trip to Dubai. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> basically um, I put up this these three classes uh, in Dubai mm -hmm. and uh, I basically put uh, all my money into going to Dubai even though and I chose it I was you know got the tickets got the apartment and everything and I didn't have any participants that had actually signed up to the classes at that point until the day I actually left until the day I arrived even <laughs> but it felt super light and I went anyway and um, but before that, the team lead of my team asked me some questions a few days before then. She said, OK, so why are you actually going to Dubai? And I was going in all these, you know, reasons, justifications and, you know, sounding good and conscious, like I want to spread consciousness and bring this class to that region, blah, 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 blah. And she stopped me right away and she said, no, I'm asking you to put your barriers down and actually ask the real question why Dubai and nowhere else in the world? You could have mm -hmm. had classes anywhere else or online or whatever. And I was just like, wow, thank you for that. It's actually my body requiring to go to Dubai right now. And as soon as I acknowledged that, I got a message from somebody that I actually never met before in person. Uh, I just knew this person on the net and, um, and uh, it turned out to be a very kind and nurturing uh, young lady that said, hey, um, I would love to participate in your classes and uh, I'll get my own flight and all this, but if you could, you know, uh, put me up in, with accommodation, I'll give you bars uh, every day or, or massage or body processes, you know, whatever your body requires, I'm there. Okay. Oh. Thank you, universe. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Mafalda, for actually asking me the question and right. opening up even to that possibility, right? Mm. So I arrive in Dubai and the apartment is great. It's right on the beach, right on the beach. So I walk outside the building and my feet are on the sand, basically. I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah. That looked so awesome. Oh, what so could day. you hear the ocean from your from your yes. windows? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yes. Although it was very calm, you know, so you heard it at nighttime, not during the day, but mm -hmm. because it's, it was in the palm. So the palm is all this man-made man -made island which is in the shape of a palm so all the water is kind of constrained by these the leaves of the palm oh so like, gotcha so it's not we don't get big waves but it's like this gentle yeah of the water and that oh, works oh, <laughs> that works that works and that created so much that created a lot because uh, one thing that popped even with taking that trip and you know, basically putting all my bets on me, trusting me and trusting the universe. Yeah. And when I did that, it was really taking this leap of faith in me, leap of trust into the darkness or lightness or whatever you want to call it, but into into an unknown space, basically. And, and uh, I'm curious, like, did it start with like, oh, Dubai? Oh, what about that? Or no, I actually started a little bit further back because I was actually supposed to hold some classes in Saudi Arabia in exactly the same period. Mm -hmm. And it was not moving. The cl those, cl those classes were not moving. Mm -hmm. So, and um, when I chose to, you know, postpone, then uh, my host in Dubai contacted me and said, hey, um, how about you coming to Dubai soon? I was like, sure. How soon is soon enough for you? And she's like, well, and it was just a couple of weeks, basically, to put up these classes. That's awesome. And well, just let's days. just back up for a second, because you yeah. said when when those classes weren't moving, yeah. a lot of people go into conclusion, judgment, wrongness yep. when yes, that exactly. happens. Exactly. So exactly. how how did you get through that? What what did no, you it's just just OK, they're not moving. OK, so what's required here? Do I cancel? Do I postpone? And if I postpone to when? Okay, I'll postpone to I don't know when. Boom, done. Cool. 
tempo. And I yeah. will. So that was interesting point of view, not, not. Yeah, and I function thing. more and more like that, and I know that I function that way of you know doing things at the last minute and being willing to change them until the last minute. And my team are freaking out, especially. And my father, my team lead, told me that she was ready to kill me like a few weeks ago because of this. <laughs> and uh, and then she said, "Well, actually, I wanted to kill you because I actually wanted to kill myself for exactly the same reason, because I tend to do that. And you know how we judge somebody for doing the things that we do, right? And uh, so it was it was a great conversation with that. And she's straight to the point all the time. I adore her. So, but so the the dates." remained more or less the same but the location changed and the energy mm -hmm. was completely different completely that's, different. that's awesome and uh so once i acknowledged also and this this is where acknowledgement becomes like a big player as well in our choices and our creations so when i acknowledge the fact that yes me going to dubai in that completely insane way uh was actually an acknowledgement of trusting the universe and trusting me and also listening to my body on, you know, why I actually chose Dubai and nowhere else and not the Alps, for instance. <laughs> um, and acknowledging all of that, a totally different space opened up. So I had people in the classes. I had people choosing the, my photo sessions, my photo facilitations until the very last day. The last day I actually had two, two shoots, no, three shoots of the last, no, two shoots of the last minute. Just people like, hey, uh, do you have any spaces left? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and so I booked them in. And so I came out of there having paid my expenses, my costs and whatever, and made a little bit of money. And more important than all, actually having listened to my body, having yeah. listened to my knowing, having listened to the universe, having acknowledged all of that and honored all of that. And... Uh, also meeting these incredible beings that were in the classes or chose my sessions whose lives changed. And that for me is always a gift to, to, for them to receive. That's me receiving that gift too. So true. Yeah. So I remember basically I chose, I made, I don't know, sorry, I just want to go there before you go. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that reel that I posted where I'm talking just about this, about taking the, this leap from this cliff, this unknown cliff. Uh, mm -hmm. of possibilities and really having the balls and guts to actually do that and trusting that, yeah, you might crash against a few rocks here and there, but you also know that you do have a set of really brilliant wings. So true. And until you learn to how to use them properly and soar, you can still soar even with your body without the wings to some extent. And if you're going to jump from one rock to the other on your way down and whatever maybe you can actually push your way out and soar even more and learn how to spread the, those wings of yours the main thing is to for me to actually take this leap of of trust basically and uh exactly. and that's how i've chosen actually to to live my life and uh well it's an ex ongoing experiment put it that way it's yeah. actually an ongoing adventure which is called my life not staying in the golden cage of comfort. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes. totally uncomfortable, yes. but we know it. <laughs> yes, exactly. um, what I was going to mention is uh, talking to Gary, I think it was a class during the lockdown of the pandemic. Um, and it was about creating future of your business. And um, he was talking about taking an hour a day and a day a week for you to nurture you in your body. And um, I, I was looking at like, what, what else do I need to do? And, you know, forget yeah. nurturing your body. Like I need to create this business. And he's like, why wouldn't you create for your body with as much importance, I guess, yes. as creating your business, because that is your life. And it's like, yes, oh, right. Absolutely. And this brings me to my next chapter, which is, you know, on Thursday, I'm going to Rome uh, with Amanda and her dad. We're going to spend Christmas there. And then uh, I've been invited by Heather Nichols to uh, her three day body class at the castle. Nice. And, uh, we're doing a swap. So she's taking um, 
uh, a session with me and I'm receiving the class. So how does it get any better than that? How does it? And um, and I just saw that being totally vulnerable with my current situation. I don't, don't want to talk about that right now. Yeah. But anyhow, <laughs> um, I'm in a situation where I really need to generate money on a daily basis, almost. Uh, and um, I was really vulnerable with Heather. And I said, yeah, I would love to come and I, I can come up. But then I have, you know, I need to be able to cover my expenses of actual you know, lodging and, you know, actually getting there, the petrol from Rome to the castle is actually like 400 euros or whatever. Yeah. Or, so it's, it's money anyway that I have to somehow create. And would it be possible for me to actually propose some of my photo sessions during the period of the class? And she said, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So together with Marco Tessiore, another brilliant photographer, friend of mine, and we co-create a lot, we're creating these sessions to see what, if anything shows up or whatever, and uh, and today I've actually chosen to to go to the castle anyhow, and spend New Year's Eve there. And after that, it's another one of these choices. And I don't know which dates yet, but um, I'm um, meeting up with a super yummy uh, friend um, in Southeast Asia, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's and it's basically with something based out of the exploration of something with that with a big question mark and uh and yes it's for my body as well and and that is what it is and first i was going like maybe we can co-create things and whatever and i was going in my head about the same thing that i started with dubai and instead i'm like no no i'm actually trusting me trusting the universe and actually uh knowing that this will create something way greater than i can imagine right now and if yeah. i come back and uh yeah and I just had a great, you know, week, two weeks, two days, two months. I don't know, because I'm thinking also of just getting a one-way flight and just mm -hmm. keeping the things open. That sounds so great. Yeah. Very much insane, according to this insane reality. But it's this right. insane reality that thinks it's insane. It is. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, normal is crazy, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And normal doesn't seem to work. Normal definitely does not work. And being called insane by an insane reality is a compliment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, this morning I was actually just off the top of my head. I was like, oh, well, maybe maybe I could go to Hawaii and create a class there and look for galleries to have my jewelry and and I was like oh wow actually that that feels really fun and light oh I wonder who would want to host and <laughs> I I was like well I don't do I know anybody and then what popped is this girl a few years ago who took my bars class as her third class to become a bars facilitator and I know that she had been creating in one of the islands I'm not sure which one yeah but um I was like, oh, I'm just going to check out. I know you were parked out front. Sorry, my daughter's leaving. <laughs> she no walked worries. out the back. Um, so I'm going to contact her, although it's six hours early there. So yeah. I'm going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it's that lightness. It's that just wisp of inspiration that most people go, oh, well, I can't do that. They they seem to logic it away or poo-poo. That's, mm -hmm. that's a stupid yeah. idea, you know, yeah. Yeah. instead of really listening for those whispers. Yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, I, you know, I try to remind myself of a, of a period that I used to call my dark period and I call it my renaissance when I actually destroyed my whole life and then created something gigantic out of it. Mm -hmm. And in that period, I was like, What's the worst thing that can happen? I've already lost all my money. I've lo I don't even have a home. I don't have anything. So what's the worst thing that can actually happen with me making this choice? And I was really, I really started, and that's when I discovered the tools of access. You mm. know, so I was playing with the tools a lot, and that basically empowered me to really create my life from from scratch, which is basically where I'm at now, but in a different way, in a different position, with loads more tools to use. Right. And, uh, and it's way more ease, a similar process, but way more ease. And, uh, and I'm actually having fun with it. Most That's of the so time, cool. 
most yeah. of the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything is not total ease all the time. Yeah, no, and I do but, have my moments of insanity. I'm not perfect and yeah, work in progress. Yeah, but like the cool thing is that you know that it's going to be very short-lived when you do get all yeah, kinked absolutely. up. Yeah, and absolutely. yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I'm, it makes the whole thing makes me very excited and very curious about, you know, what the universe will unravel in front of me and what is cooking up right now. And when I get impatient of wanting to get to the next step and the next step and next step and, you know, visualizing things, which I know I should not do because that limits it. Uh, I'm, by getting impatient, I'm actually dishonoring the universe. So when I catch myself of like, oh, but I want it now, what did it yesterday? But okay, relax, breathe. I mean, today I had yeah. a super lazy day. I got up super late. Okay, I went to bed super late as well last night, but I got up super late. Thank God I have a very lazy dog that sleeps longer than me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it does not get me out of bed. So it goes to <laughs> late and then I was working on some pictures that I need to deliver. And, and, uh, and I started looking at, you know, where I'm going after the castle, opening up Airbnb and like, doing the, they have these new searches now you can search for i don't know mansions beaches or waterfront or lakes or whatever it is so i just pick different things and different parts of the world showed up including southeast asia where I'm, i i think that's exactly where i'm where i'm heading because with this friend of mine we're trying to figure out where to meet and and uh i think it's going to be southeast asia i'm pretty sure about it very cool yeah yeah what was I going to ask you? Um, something that's been popping lately is like the, um, what is it called? It's like the, poss uh, uh, it's just leaving my head. It's on the tip of my tongue. Something about possibilities, um, but the limitation, like going into the possibilities of limitation instead of infinite possibilities, right, right, something like that. Right, right. Um, and yeah, being an infinite possibility is actually not having any point of view whatsoever, right? It's actually not having any judgment, not having any, any expectations, not having any boundaries whatsoever. That's infinite possibilities. Because when we when we have any conclusion or assumption that something maybe cannot happen or maybe is insane or maybe it's two way out there or or beyond or whatever it is then then it becomes limited possibilities and not infinite possibilities exactly it's this willingness of receiving from anything and anyone without any point of view where receiving does not mean you're actually going to choose it but you're willing to receive it exactly i love that yeah i mean i was i was having a conversation with another friend of mine a while ago and who's in a similar situation and uh and um and we were going to the absurd and i love how certain conversations tend to go to the absurd and they actually create so much awareness yeah i was like yeah but i mean you know when i was when i was a teenager i was actually offered an apartment behind uh, Harrods in London that today is probably worth like 10 million pounds at least or 30 million pounds at least. And I just said no, because that meant me having sex with my road manager, this mm. way older gentleman than me. Mm. And I just left with a fortune that was basically handed over to me in the form of a, a key. And I was like, if I was in a similar situation now, would I actually turn it down or not? Buy us down. I was like, <laughs> it's a oh, great no. question. <laughs> and I was like, no, how long does a blowjob take? I mean, if I do a quick one, I mean, most men in this reality, it's very quick. So I can do that. And <laughs> even if it's a man from this reality who takes longer, even those guys, maybe 15 minutes and 15 minutes of my life for 30 million pounds. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll give him an hour discount. <laughs> and so when, this conversation yeah. led to, okay, so would I be willing to actually become, if I were completely flat broke and whatever, would I actually be willing, in spite of my tender age, 
to become a gigolo. I was like, yeah, that feels right. I, 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 absolutely. And when I look into it, and I started looking into it because it's so funny, because when I see one thing, get one tiny bit of an idea, and I start to extrapolate and investigate and go deeper into the thing and get, you know, trying to get as much information as possible, mainly see other possibilities. So I got a lot of information about what gig being a gigolo actually means. And it's basically like a luxury prostitute for women. Yeah. Where you are not, actually sex is not even included. That is extra services. Exactly. A gigolo is basically company for a dinner or a party or just somebody to be seen with. An escort. Yeah. An escort, yes. I talked and about I that really many to... years ago with, with a friend of mine from Access and, and I was like, that sounds great to me. I would love yeah. to receive, you know, whatever yeah. for going to dinner, being companion, all of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. I was actually <laughs> offered, I had a model agency years, years ago. And there was this uh, escort agency in uh, Australia, I think it was. But the funny thing is, it was in Australia, but the owner was Swedish. And one of my models had discovered that some of her pictures were actually being used on this agency's website. <sighs> and it was not her. So she said, can you please take care of it? Being my job as her agent, I looked into it, digged into it, sent an email, you know, threatening them with uh, lawsuits and whatever. And the lady, the owner, is super cool and everything. She said, hey, I'm actually, I see you're based in Stockholm. I'm actually in Stockholm for the next couple of days. Would you like to grab a coffee? And I was like, yes. And I was still with this energy of like fight and resistance and reaction or whatever. And we met for coffee and she said, okay, first of all, I have to apologize because that girl that actually posted those pictures, it's a new girl. She posted them. I trusted her. It was wrong of me, but she's not with the agency anymore. So the pictures are not on the website anymore. And she apologized, is there anything more that I can do for your model, blah, blah, blah. And she was super, super straight. And we started talking just about gigolos. And she said that she had this uh, Bollywood star that was actually on her books. And it, it's a super famous, act, famous actor in India. And he goes for dinner for shitloads of money. Yeah. And then she smiles and she says, maybe you would be interested in doing something like that. And I was like, no, no, I couldn't. I'm married. You know, I was married to my first wife. And I was like, no, I couldn't do it. I'm married. So no, thank you. But thanks for the compliment, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, it's a shame that um, this was like 30 years, 25 years ago. But <laughs> well, and, and also, I've, I've been making myself wrong. This is the thing with judgment and points of views and who does it belong to. When I was investigating about what being a gigolo is, it was on different gigolo websites. And seeing all these super hunks and these, you know, young guys like ribbed and, you know, the epitome of male physical perfection, which is a very interesting point of view anyhow, because what is it? You know, you change country and it changes. Anyway, uh, and I was making myself wrong for being, you know, not tall enough, uh, way too dark or not dark enough. Uh, and, uh, you know, all of these things like, Hold on a second. What and about being, the energy? Being older, exactly. <laughs> and being older, that's the first time that my age actually hit me and I never thought about it that way. No, no, no. Yeah, but that's does, experience. Who does that belong to? Exactly. <laughs> I have way more experience. I have totally different energy. And so, yeah, who would mm -hmm. like to give me that money that I was, maybe I wouldn't even have to have dinner with them unless I actually chose to and it was super yummy. So yeah. I'm really like opening up to possibilities and I'm opening up to receiving pretty much from anything and anyone. And then the choice, the final choice is mine, of course. It's my life. Exactly. Yeah. When I did some of that research, it was a long time ago, maybe 15, 12 years ago. Um, and all the websites that I could find, the energy was just really not light so if you do happen to find one that is expansive let me well, know <laughs> yeah and i discovered another thing i discovered for the gigolos is that it's always best to have your own website that uh, you list on these lists of gigolos or you know 
<laughs> luxury <laughs> gains of leisure or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to create your website and uh, the, the websites of the, the guys that I've seen it's super well made and very clean and very stylish and whatever. And uh, yeah, so do that and then get it listed somewhere. <laughs> okay and yes if i do find something then i'll let you know for sure <laughs> i yeah i think that would be so fun yeah so and, fun yeah exactly absolutely you know if you need a plus one for your whatever wedding business something yeah or you're just alone and lonely like yeah. how wonderful would company of somebody who isn't judging you is yeah. energetically contributing exactly. to you so your body exactly. feels better exactly. and smart enough intelligent enough to have a witty banter conversation i mean exactly. people would pay thousands for that yes and the, none of those points are on the list of these websites that i've seen nothing because they all talk about their physical aspect their you know and the guys were talking about, oh, you know, classical gentleman, blah, 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 athletic, and all these things that you find with everybody, but nobody actually talks about this, about the energy that can be receiving. I mean, look, look at now, you know, to the holiday season, how many lonely people are there out there that would love to have, like, spend an evening or a weekend or whatever with somebody that is actually caring, nurturing, kind. And, and they can have fun with in, you know, cook for them and, or whatever it is that is fun for, for any of us. So true. Well, so be it. Yeah. So be Let's it. see what happens. Exactly. Hey universe, <laughs> we put it out there now. <laughs> it's funny that we both have had that in our past Yeah. and it's circling back around now. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly very interesting all yeah. right wow it's already the top of the hour and um, off to my next uh, thing yes Thank and you, you so didn't much. we didn't have a title for this but i think you will have a pretty cool title for this already right <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so i'll have to i'll have to see what rises to the top yes yes Anyway, what thank you pops so much. up, so to speak. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks everybody thank for you. watching. See thank you next you so time. Much. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 -bye.